So the white cable is the voice cable, and we always pull white for voice in our company. And the blue cable is data. Now we're going to punch down the voice to a 66 block. And one of the things you want to do is you want to bring it in from underneath. That's why you have standoff brackets. That is a standoff bracket for a 66 block or a vertical 12 port patch panel. The custom is, is to bring the cable in from the bottom and then you do your cross connect from the top. So right now we're going to feed some cables into an old 66 block that still has some room available on it on the right side. And these are just not 66 blocks but these are split 66 blocks and that's the standard in the industry. The reason they call them split 66 blocks, if you can see, is that these two are connected and these two are connected, but they're not connected together. So they're split down the middle. So if you want to connect a wire from here to a wire that's attached here, you've got to use what's called a bridge clip. And that bridge clip goes between these two and connects this electronically from here to here. So all four became electronically connected. We don't use a lot of bridge clips, but they are helpful in some areas where you bring in your CO lines on the right side and you take them out to your phone system on the left side and you can just bridge them over. Or you can use your wires, your cross connect wires to bridge them over. It's an older technology, 66 blocks. They've been around for more than 30 years. Uh, they're rated at Cat 5. I don't know anyone that's using them though for computers. They always seem to be used for voice. Voice applications or analog applications like fax machines or modems or telephones. And of course if you're bringing in analog lines from the phone company, sometimes this is where they get attached. When the phone company brings them in, they usually put a little red cover to them and then at that point they change the name to a RJ21X. We'll come back to the 110 punch down and the 66 block punch down in a minute, but as you can see we already cut into this uh, area and put in a low voltage plaster ring, sometimes known as a P-ring. And when you pull the cable first before they paint the walls, and that's called pre-cable. Now once the walls are printed and the carpet's in and all, the next phase is set finish. So we've come back a couple days later in this building after they painted the walls. You always want to set finish after they paint the walls. So now we'll put in uh, the jacks, RJ45s for the computers and RJ11 for uh, telephones. In this case, they're just having a standard telephone. Uh, they're not using VoIP. If you're using VoIP, it would be an RJ45. But this is what it looks like in the construction phase. It should take you about an hour and 15 minutes on average to uh, pull one cable, jack it, and label it, test it out the door. That's a good way to estimate it. Hour and 15 minutes to an hour and a half. If you got a normal commercial building, no wood construction, and uh, nothing in your way, it goes fairly quick. So right now you're doing cable cleanup before you do your punch down and all. And of course you're using uh, Velcro tie wraps. And the reason why is it's easy to add cables. You're always going to add cables in the future. So rather than use regular tie wraps that have to be cut, put back on, we use Velcro. And we cut our own. Get a roll of Velcro, comes in 25, 50, and hundreds, and then you just cut what you need. Makes it nice and neat, easy to add things. And there is a big old D ring up there. Really usable D rings, you can use them for multiple different things and whenever you need them. So, what are you doing now? I'm just getting ready to route the cables in to punch it to the patch panel and I've mounted the patch panel upside down and backwards starting with number one here 
mm -hmm. two, three, four. So I'm gonna start bringing my cables in this direction. But when I'm done, I'm just gonna flip it back over and put it back onto the stand. So this is a standoff bracket. It looks like, what is it, U, U2, U1, U1? One U. One U. And uh, of course the patch panel that's underneath it is an old patch panel that's someone else put in a long time ago. But these are the patch panels that we sell on our website. We've been using them for years. Pretty good quality. You're going to do a 66 block first? Yeah, I'm going to start here with the 66 block. You can punch down a total of six cables on one side. There's 25 pins here. There's four pairs in each cable. Four times six, 24. You'll have one pair left over. So a total of six cables on each side. Hey, Some well, left on this side. You know, I know why, but a lot of people say, well, you only use one pair on the 66. So why do you want to why do you want to punch down all four pair? Because uh, if you ever have the opportunity to you re to put a jack on the end of uh, one of the other pairs, then you now it ha you have it available for you to add additional RJ11s at the other side. So in 99% of the cases, when it comes to analog, you're only using one pair. Um, some of the older phones would use two or three pairs, but now most of the analog phones sold today, or even the digital phones sold today, only use one pair. But that means you can put four different jacks on that one voice cable. And, and we run Cat5e voice cables all the time. We don't break it out into Cat3 anymore. It's just not cost effective. And now I'm just going to be setting down each one of the pairs. So you're hooking them on there right now, but not ready to punch them down until you get them all ready to go. So you're breaking out according to color code, blue, orange, green, brown. Now I've got all of them set down. cutting end of the blade is facing down. You always go over top and then down. And notice how nice and tight that is along the side. We're not, don't have a lot of loose cables sticking out. You want it tight. You don't have to be like a gorilla tight, but you want it snug to the side. That makes for a neat install. Notice also that we're not looking at what cable we're going to identify the cables later and then write right there on the 66 block uh, the jack number. But right now we just want to cable. Uh, some people prefer to name, name the jacks, let's say, in a uh, clockwise around the room. It's not a good idea. Uh, it doesn't really work well. Uh, it causes uh, uh, problems because when you add another jack, all of a sudden you're your, your numbering is all messed up and it takes twice as long labor-wise. It does not add anything to the aesthetics or to the uh, time that, it, that you're using. So uh, uh, if you just take the cables, punch them all down, and then identify them, um, that's the best way. It's easy to find them. Especially if you're using a, a tone and probe. Um, even if you don't have them labeled, it's pretty easy to find the pair you're looking for using a toner and a probe. And that's that's pretty standard technology for installers, toner and probe. And you see we're working now on our second pair. And he's just gonna punch those down too. Uh, remember, keep it neat, neatness counts in cabling. Uh, Keep everything as clean as possible and as easy to troubleshoot. Less likely to have uh, problems. Never reuse a 66 block once it's been punched down. Those uh, punch down areas on the 66 block tend to not handle the second punch down very well. 
So uh, they're, they're so inexpensive, it doesn't make sense to reuse uh, patch panels or 66 blocks. The time spent in doing all the work on a use and then find out that, that it's not holding the cable properly mm, is a problem. Also, because you're dealing with copper, um, it tends to tarnish if it's not punched down right, which creates resistance in the line, and which you'll figure it out on a moist, rainy day when you have static on your analog lines and you're having trouble on your computer lines. So don't reuse patch panels or 66 blocks for one-time use products. Okay, and why are you using tie wraps? Well, I just put a few tie wraps just to hold it together. And when I get done, I'll put some Velcro on and make it clean. And notice I've got a little tape right here, and then I just put a tie wrap right here and right here just to hold it together for now. So when I get done, I'm going to cut those off. You know, look at the difference between what we're doing and what was done before. Look at all those tie wraps on there and the, and the poor punch down right there. You can see that where all the cables are sticking out. This is, that's just not a quality install. All the cables hanging all over the place. You're most likely going to have problems with that, or you could have problems with that. You know, I think one of the problems I've seen in the past is uh, someone calls, of course it has nothing to do with cleanliness, I mean uh, neatness and and cabling, but I've had a person call in the past and then, uh, oh, we're having problems with the telephone only to go into the uh, the distribution frame area, the, the telco closet, and find that the uh, metal handle to the mop has been uh, placed up against the 66 block. I'm sure you've seen that before. I have. Or there's so much junk in front of the, the system. It, it actually shows a disrespect for the value that, that they're placing on the IT equipment. And they, you know, sometimes people don't value it until it doesn't work. And then all of a sudden it's valued. At least for a day and then everyone forgets about it which is okay so what is done is just business. trimmed everything close mm -hmm. till I'm gonna punch it down right here on number one and number two and I'm gonna use the uh, V pattern which is white orange green brown but because I have it upside down we're gonna be working from right to left so blue orange green brown and you know something else too is even though you're flipping it upside down you could also flip it right side up and uh, do some changes then too so you're just marking the end of each one huh? that's the blue pair so I know where I'm starting I want to point out is that a professional installer always has tools on their hip because it takes up so much time reaching down grabbing tools. Some of your bigger unused tools though can go in tool bags and uh, you always have a light in the truck. This room is fairly well lit. Ready to punch down? Ready to punch down. Okay. Okay so I've set the the pairs into the patch panel. I've used the 568B pattern which is but you notice I have it upside down. So white, blue, white, orange, white, green, white, brown. Ready to punch it down. And of course you're using a 110 punch down because that's different than a 66 block. Notice how tight that is. You want to keep the twist as tight as you can up to the point of punch down. Look how nice and neat that is. I'm sure you've been to those places where other people punch down. It looks like spaghetti coming into the back. <laughs> it really is. It's horrible. And then if you wiggle the patch panel, some of them fall out because they're not properly supported.
But we also been doing this for 25 years or more. Now before we flip it over, I just want to show you how nice and neat that is. Notice it doesn't look like spaghetti. It actually is nice and neat. And we're getting ready to flip it over here. Obviously there's some areas that are left open because it's a 24 port patch panel and we have not filled them all up. It looks like 15 out of 24. When they add in a the future there'll be space. But that's what it looks like before it flips. See how nice and neat that is. See the twists being kept tight and close. Yeah, it's a really nice clean job. So we finished all the cable and today tomorrow we put in the phone system and hook up everything else. The last thing to do is put the face plates on and test. And testing is for another video. Hope you enjoyed this video. This is Jim with CableSupply.com. Please visit our website at www.CableSupply.com. And everything that's been featured today, except for the technicians, are on our website. And one of the things that we emphasize is that the parts we sell you are the parts we use every day. And uh, when we install these parts, we offer a 15-year warranty. And we've never gone back on one. And we've been in business now for 25 years. So use our experience to your advantage. Save some money. At the same time, install a professional-looking cabling job. Again, this is Jim with CableSupply.com. Please visit us on the web. Bye.